As long as I am an American citizen, and as long as American blood runs in these veins, I shall hold myself at liberty to speak, to write, and to publish whatever I please on any subject, being amenable to the laws of my country for the same. Elijah Parrish Lovejoy On the night of November 7, 1837, an angry pro-slavery mob encircled the Godfrey Gilman & Co. warehouse in an attempt to see Elijah Lovejoy's printing press. What started as an attack on a printing press became an attack on a human, and Lovejoy was shot and killed. Although the outcome was tragic, the legacy and path that Lovejoy left behind was monumental and continues to stand for principles that guide social justice movements in this country. Black, white, brown, tall, skinny, short, it doesn't matter. Elijah Lovejoy was born on November 9, 1802 in Albion, Maine. He graduated from Colby College in 1826 as a valedictorian and class poet. In 1835, he married Celia Ann French of St. Charles, Missouri, and they had two children. Initially, he was a teacher in St. Louis for a short period of time, but then he decided he wanted to follow his father's footsteps and go into ministry. He studied at the Princeton Theological Seminary for 13 months and was later ordained by the Second Philadelphia Presbyterian Church in 1833, but he rarely preached. He moved back to St. Louis, Missouri, which was a slave state at the time, and slowly started to create an anti-slavery newspaper. The anti-slavery movement began to receive popularity in the 1820s. Specifically, the Missouri Compromise was passed in 1820, which allowed Missouri to enter the Union as a slave state. This caused an uproar of anti-slavery movements in the North, which came to be known as the Abolitionist Movement. While the abolitionist movement started peacefully, it quickly became violent and dangerous. Abolitionists were considered a minority at the time because of the extreme backlash that they faced. They were harassed, attacked, and murdered because of their anti-slavery opinions. President Andrew Jackson prohibited abolitionist literature to be delivered in the South. In May of 1836, a gag rule was passed, which forbidden the House of Representatives to discuss bills that restricted slavery. John Quincy Adams raised one of the most passionate objections to the procedure and considered it a direct violation to the Constitution. He spent years arguing against the gag rule, and in 1844, he finally collected enough votes to repeal it. One of Lovejoy's influencers, William Lloyd Garrison, was a prominent early abolitionist, journalist, and a social reformer. He founded an abolitionist newspaper called The Liberator in 1831. The newspaper called for immediate action to be taken place to free all slaves. He was one of the most progressive members of the American Anti-Slavery Society, which was established in 1833. After Lovejoy was ordained by the Presbyterian Church, he decided to move back to St. Louis to pursue his interest in journalism. He became an editor of the St. Louis Observer, which was a Presbyterian newspaper. This newspaper discussed moral and religious issues, but it wasn't an anti-slavery newspaper. However, when Lovejoy heard about a group of white men burning Francis McIntosh at the stake, he suddenly became passionate in the fight against slavery. Francis McIntosh was a free mulatto steamboat steward who was arrested in April 1836 for interfering with sheriff's deputies. When he asked the deputies what his punishment would be, they jokingly said that he would be hung but he took the comment seriously. McIntosh broke free and stabbed both deputies, but only one died, and he was then captured by a crowd of witnesses. He was tied to a tree near 10th and Market Street and was burned for 18 minutes until he met his death. Lovejoy saw this event as a last straw and decided to partake in the fight against slavery. The St. Louis Observer newspaper became popular, but it started to agitate some St. Louisans because of Lovejoy's stance on slavery. Missouri was a slave state, so many people were completely against the idea that slavery should be abolished. For instance, Lovejoy stated in one of his articles, Slavery is demonstrably evil in every community where it exists, 
It presses like a nightmare on the body politic. Friends and financial supporters of the Observer encouraged Lovejoy to stop talking about anti-slavery opinions, but Lovejoy didn't listen to them. Lovejoy did not surrender and wasn't afraid of the consequences of speaking his mind. He chose to celebrate his right of freedom of the press. Lovejoy strongly believed in his constitutional right of protesting and speaking against slavery. He refused to keep silent on a topic he was so passionate about. He stated, The cry of the oppressed has entered not only into my ears, but into my soul, so that while I live, I cannot hold my peace. Freedom of the press was established on August 4, 1735, and it was protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. However, it is important to note that abolitionists had a difficult time being able to express this right. One of the most significant implements of the abolitionist movement was a printed word, which included newspapers, pamphlets, books, etc. Therefore, they had to fight for the right to be able to express their anti-slavery thoughts without the possibility of facing persecution. For example, in 1859, abolitionist John Brown was executed due to his effort to violently overthrow the slavery system. Lovejoy was a follower of William Lloyd Garrison and took after Garrison's practice of freedom of the press. John Quincy Adams called Lovejoy the first martyr to freedom of the press in America. Since Lovejoy was facing mass amounts of criticism, he decided that it would be the safest and best choice to move him and his family across the Mississippi River to Alton, Illinois. When he announced this, a pro-slavery group broke into the St. Louis Observer's offices and knocked over the printing press and broke many items. He got the printing press back and shipped it to Alton, but it was destroyed and thrown into the Mississippi River again. He became the editor of the Alton Observer, which was a religious newspaper. At the time, Illinois was a free state, so Lovejoy thought he would be able to pursue his passion in peace. However, this wasn't the case because many people supported slavery. He made it clear to the people that the newspaper wasn't just for the talk of abolition, but he had a right to express his opinion and openly discuss slavery. For example, he stated, I have sworn eternal opposition to slavery, and by the blessing of God, I will never go back. Lovejoy slowly began to talk more and more about slavery, which made the pro-slavery groups extremely irritated. The slavery supporters broke into the Alton Observer's office twice, where they destroyed the printing press and threw it into the Mississippi River. Lovejoy acquired another printing press and continued to publish anti-slavery pieces. Pro-slavery groups began to discuss violence as an option to stop Lovejoy from performing his activism. On November 7, 1837, Lovejoy had retrieved another printing press at Godfrey Gilman & Co. warehouse, and a pro-slavery mob surrounded the building. They demanded Lovejoy to hand over the press, but Lovejoy and his supporters in the warehouse refused. When the pro-slavery group attempted to set the warehouse on fire, Lovejoy stepped outside and was shot five times. His last words were, Oh God, I am shot. Immediately after Lovejoy's death, the pro-slavery mob fulfilled its primary objective. It barged into the warehouse, took the printing press, and hurled it into the Mississippi River. Eliza Lovejoy was a crucial element of the abolitionist movement because of his bravery. He was willing to put his life on the line to speak in what he believed in, and unfortunately he lost his life. When the pro-slavery mob killed Lovejoy, it didn't realize that his death would bring new voices and supporters of the abolition movement. People like Wendell Phillips and John Brown protested Lovejoy's murder and were inspired by the tragic event. After his death, countless people became members of abolitionist societies. Many other supporters were drawn to the movement by organizations and groups being formed in protest of Lovejoy's death. Today, Elijah Lovejoy is still remembered and honored in America through societies and awards. At Colby College, the college Lovejoy attended, the Elijah Parrish Lovejoy Journalism Award is given to a journalist who sacrificed their life to shed light on important issues. The Elijah P. Lovejoy Society was started in 1975 by a Presbyterian minister and educator, Robert Tabscott. This society collaborated with the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to create American Heritage Culture Curriculum. Topics like violence against the Jews in the South, 
history of slavery in America, and the rise of Barack Obama were covered. Unfortunately, the society was closed in 2011 due to lack of funding. Lovejoy's death helped create a new sense of bravery and prove that speaking your mind shouldn't be something that is looked down upon. Lovejoy's bravery and willingness to fight for what he believed in played a huge role in the abolishment of slavery. Time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tell and a time to make.